Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. It's World Cup time. I've not picked up a Panini World Cup sticker album, but I have been feeling a little sorry for myself with this darn ear infection. And earlier today, I sat there miserable like a teenager playing FIFA, and I went for the World Cup mode. Now, of course, I played as England. Belgium may have won the group, but I scraped through into the runner-up spot. Beat Colombia, Germany, Spain, and finally Argentina on penalties. Why am I telling you this? Because I want to document it in case my World Cup playthrough actually comes true. But I think we all know that that's pretty unlikely. Anyway, back to business, gang. As you know, I always like to think of every day as a school day and believe that continuously learning is crucial, no matter how old you are. Now, I recently came across a new data report from Varsity Tutors, and they're a live learning company that recently raised $50 million from Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. And the report looks into the interest in learning about STEM subjects right across the US, and specifically how the Midwest is becoming the US burgeoning tech hub. For example, 65% of children entering primary school today will work in jobs that don't even exist yet. And as careers become increasingly tech-focused, access to those proper skills training are going to be essential. So it's easy to assume that tech hubs like San Francisco, LA, Seattle and New York are the source of that much-needed growth. However, the data in their report tells a very different story. So buckle up and hold on tight as I invite you to let me beam your ears all the way to St. Louis so we can speak with Kevin Gargash from Vosti Tutors. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Thanks, Neil, for uh, asking me to join you today. First, Varsity Tutors operates the largest marketplace uh, for online, mobile, or in-house tutoring in the United States. And we're beginning to leverage our platform in new categories and new countries, including a recent acquisition of First Tutors uh, in the United Kingdom. Our vision is to seamlessly connect Experts and learners in any subject, any time, anywhere. Today, we have over 40,000 uh, instructors across over 1,000 subjects online for in-person, one-on-one uh, tutoring. As the chief people officer, uh, which is a fancy way of saying I'm uh, responsible for all areas of human resource leadership at Varsity Tutors, I like to look at my role across three dimensions, capability, capacity, and culture. First, ensuring each employee has the skills needed to deliver on the promises that we as varsity tutors makes to our learners and our experts each day. In other words, capability building. Second, does varsity tutors have enough people to deliver on all of the promises we make to our customers each and every day? In other words, capacity building. And then finally, are our employees able to do what they do best each and every day? In other words, creating the right culture. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, as a father of two teenage girls, I am proud to see their interest in STEM uh, subjects, especially robotics, through the FIRST Robotics program here in the United States. I recently read that the speed of technological change has never moved this fast before, but equally, it's never going to move this slow again. And this is when I discovered a report from you guys that talked about how the future of work is changing. So can you tell the listeners how, thanks to technology, much of the world as we know it now will be vastly different in just a few decades? And 65% of children entering primary school right now are going to eventually work in jobs that don't even exist yet and how the skills that we focus on acquiring must reflect our society's future, because I think it's a fantastic uh, talking point that uh, I read about in this report. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting, and, and I don't think this is necessarily anything new. We've been talking about how tools like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics are starting to really permeate into a lot of things we interact with every single day. So there's this really a blended uh, experience now. And we're seeing that at Varsity Tutors, where in the last 12 months, uh, we've had an increase, a a 300% increase in interest around artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics as far as tutoring. As a company, we really uh, symbolize this transformation. We started as a in-person, 
in-home tutoring company as a marketplace about 10 years ago. And over the course of those 10 years, we've shifted to be more virtual, on-demand, online uh, marketplace where you can get the best person globally. And, of course, that shift requires having a deep bench of coding, engineering expertise, and, and other companies are seeing this shift as well. And it, it's not only in the tech hubs of Boston, San Francisco, and Seattle. We've seen a 14 uh, times uh, increase in the interest around computer science tutoring in places like Omaha, Nebraska, uh, 14 times greater interest there than uh, the nation as an average, or in Cincinnati where it's 13 times the nation average. And it's not just the skills for software developers or engineers. It's really the ability to think critically, design experiments, do A-B testing, use advanced math skills. It's becoming necessary in all disciplines in the company, whether it's marketing, sales, or even in human resources. This idea of the scientific method and the ability to think critically and design experiments is what's important. STEM skills have never been more important for kids entering education, and I would assume that any initiatives around STEM skill development would be led by traditional tech hubs like San Francisco. But this isn't the case, is it? I mean, can you share some of those findings? Yeah, that's right, Neil. Uh, what we're seeing is actually in Silicon Valley, the interest or the demand for STEM advanced placement uh, subject tutoring is actually on the decline. It decreased over 3% in the last 12 months. Uh, and as I mentioned before, in cities in the Midwest, like Cincinnati, that same subject matter has increased 33 times, uh, so over 3,000% increase. Uh, computer science tutoring is skyrocketing in Indianapolis and Omaha. And what's happening is I think is parents are seeing that technology is a way to help their, their children get ahead. The students want to get involved, and because of technology, they can access subject matter expertise anywhere. So the actual demand is happening uh, in, in non-tech hubs, and while some of the supply might be uh, fulfilled in those tech hubs. And personally, again, uh, relating how I, I've seen this happen with my own daughters, my oldest daughter became interested in robotics back when we were living on the East Coast. She was learning to fly an airplane. She decided to join a robotics club. She was the only uh, girl a, a, on the team at the time. And when we had the opportunity to move from the East Coast here to uh, St. Louis in 2015, she and her younger sister researched the schools, and they picked the one that had the strongest STEM program, a strong robotics program. And this past year, uh, my older daughter was the co-captain of the team with another amazing young woman, uh, and she'll be heading to university in the fall to study engineering and with some luck have her pilot's license. So it's, it's really a personal story for me in seeing that it's not only in the tech hubs of San Francisco and Seattle, uh, but, but it's really taking hold here in the middle part of the country. And I love that element of the story there that you was able to share with me. And another surprise for me was that engineers and developers no longer need to be stationed in those traditional tech hubs to find work in technology. And can you expand on this and why some of those companies are actually forced to offer flexible and remote working conditions to entice uh, staff over there? Sure. And, and, you know, I don't know if I'd call it being forced, but rather being smart. I, I yeah. think it's just really a smart to think about it. Um, the best talent that you could possibly get for your company may not be located within commuting distance of where you are. So because of technology advancements and the ability to communicate seamlessly across great distances, uh, companies are able to find the best person who probably can uh, uh, afford to live uh, uh, in a lower cost area. So they're probably able to keep their costs down, get a more diverse pool of talent, uh, more flexibility by working at home. And the way I look at it is almost every technology company, especially a consumer facing technology company has customers uh, throughout the country, if not throughout the world. And so it only behooves you. It only, it only makes it better if your employees are interacting with all of that diversity in those diverse local communities. So I don't think it's being forced, but rather it's an opportunity of being smart to see I can lower my costs, I can get the highest quality candidate for the role. Just much like on our platform today, you can get a much higher quality tutor who's engaging in our platform. They may not be located in the same city, state, or frankly, even in the same country that you are. 
So with the level of change sweeping across the employment landscape, both here in the UK and over there in the US, I think we do need to be very careful that we don't leave people behind and educate everyone so that can, everyone can come along for the ride to the future as those traditional roles start to disappear and new roles start to appear in their place. But do you think that STEM development extends beyond our adult learners eager to add new technology skills to their resumes? Absolutely, Neil. Absolutely. And, that, and that's why you've seen an uptick in the toys that get kids involved at an early age in STEM development. And I think as importantly, why employers are offering opportunities to train in new fields and skills. And, and there's a great example I'd like to share of how Varsity Tutors is helping in this front. So recently, uh, we had someone come to us, uh, a gentleman by the name of Bill. Now, Bill is a baby boomer living in Dallas in Texas. Uh, right out of high school, he went straight into the Marine Corps. Uh, and he wasn't exposed to as much of the modern tech in that role in the Marine Corps. Eventually, as he got uh, discharged, he left the Marine Corps, he got a job at AT&T. And they encouraged his continuous learning. And they asked him, Bill, how can you pick up more skills to make yourself more necessary in the job you had? And Bill started using varsity tutors to get help studying for his computer program nano degree. So today, Bill has redefined his career uh, through the help that we were able to provide and our experts were able to provide on our platform. And more employers are trying to encourage this learning beyond the traditional skill sets. And at Varsity Tutors, uh, we aim to make that a simple, accessible process that you can access at any time, anywhere, and it doesn't need to be scheduled. And for our own employees, we have 52 hours of tutoring that every employee has at their fingertips for personal skill building. And I've seen people take one-on-one -on -one instruction in coding, SQL, leadership development, even before they had moved into a managerial role to prepare them for that, statistics, just to name a few of the courses. So, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the classic dog fooding and making sure we understand how we're able to help our employees continually develop by using our platform and the experts that we have on it. And can you also tell me more about how both artificial intelligence and machine learning are continuing to change how we interact with technology and how many are eager to learn more about the technology and even more importantly, of course, how to apply it? Yeah, this, this is again where in the last 12 months uh, nationwide, we've seen a uh, threefold increase in the requests around artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics tutoring requests. And it goes back to the idea that every company and every person has to understand technology. We're all starting to lean on and touch products that leverage these technologies uh, every day. And it's really a blending of that. And people worry that artificial intelligence, machine learning is going to steal their job. But the fact of the matter is computers can't create the same emotional, interpersonal response that humans do. You know, that's why for us to be strong, we need to not only understand the tech solutions and how to use technology, but the soft skills in it. And I'm going to give you a couple examples of this. Um, in, in our business, we're empowering the tutors who are on our marketplace to really better understand our learners and to, to, on behalf of the student, raise the student's hand when we can discern through technology that they're struggling and may not be expressing that explicitly. So the, the machine, the artificial intelligence, can actually sense that where the learner may not be able to and detect comprehension versus struggling. And at the same time, we're able to uh, help our tutors become better tutors with supporting and timely content. This content, which we label learning tools, uh, is being fed uh, for our tutors to use in their sessions based on what we're seeing. And, and the beauty of this content, a lot of it's being also just created through artificial intelligence. So you can see how it's really an augmentation process uh, that's happening. And again, it's so important to teach everyone. It's not just about technology. It's about the human interaction with technology. And first, robotics, uh, my daughter's uh, robotics work that she does, they talk about this idea of gracious professionalism and coopetition. You know, this idea that even though you might be competing against someone in the contest around robotics, you need to help them if they need help. It's going to be, it's going to be in your best interest to make sure that their robots are working. And we all need to pitch in together because, again, at the end, we're all humans. 
Now, the days of a job for life are long gone, but do you think that the speed of technological growth and the, and the adoption that goes with it means there are always going to be more skills to learn and more, or more skills to gain, much like Bill that you mentioned there that on that journey of continuous learning? Yeah, there's always something else to learn. And, yeah. and that's why at Varsity Truth, we're excited to be there. You know, those lifelong learners that realize that they may have mastered one skill and they want to learn something else. Maybe they want to pay that forward and they take their skill that they've mastered and make it part of, and they become part of the experts on our platform. Um, it really comes down to making that education process easy. It should feel engaging. It needs to be exciting. It needs to be personal and tailored to exactly what you're looking forward to. Um, you know, the Internet's a wonderful place. You can find answers to anything that you've ever thought of and many things that you never could have possibly thought of. But sometimes you have to shuffle through web pages, and, and you might get the fact, you, you might get the answer, but do you get the understanding? And our intention is with varsity tutors and having a, a perfect match in that marketplace with the expert who can sit there face-to-face -face with you and guide you through the field and, and really the why beneath the sort of facts and understand Spanish or microeconomics or uh, Shakespearean literature, it, whatever you want to learn, another language, uh, do it now. And again, that's part of the value of this instant platform. No longer are you subject to scheduling the tutoring. You can just go online on the app and get access to an expert within a matter of two to three minutes. They'll be there talking to you, walking for however long you want, walking you through to get, gain that better understanding. So are there any other big findings from that report that you can share with us today that you think would be really interesting for the listeners? Yeah, yeah, I think a couple of things. You know, Varsity Tutors, we were excited to see that the data is reflecting that we've seen a lot recently, just, just as I walk around our floor and, and listen to people talk to our customers. You know, Amazon's headquarters, too, search continues to include Midwestern cities, investments in Midwestern startups has increased. Um, we're a beneficiary of that. The number of flexible and remote workers has also increased. Our data proves that these subjects, computer science, uh, advanced placements, STEM subjects, coding, robotics, it's not a fact. Kids are getting interested. They're the ones who will be building these incredible products that will start solving the big problems that we continue to see today. And uh, just in computer science, we've seen, again, a 33-fold uh, increase in interest in AP STEM computer science courses uh, in the Midwest cities. And to give you some context of uh, the scale of this, we've ha we have about 32,000 tutors in STEM subjects on our platform, of which over half of those were already active this year, meaning they've been providing expertise. So 15,000 experts providing this expertise uh, on, the uh, on STEM and on STEM subjects this year. So you've had this report, you've got some amazing findings in there, but the question I've got to ask, I suppose, is how are you going to act upon those findings at Varsity Tutors? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the interest is amazing. We're, we're always looking for experts in these exciting fields to join our marketplace as tutors. There's clearly a massive appetite out there for these subjects, not just in the Midwest, but across the country. It's an opportunity for those experts in, in these fields to pay it forward, pass on that knowledge, help arm someone with new skills, earn some extra money from a passion of yours. Uh, you know, this is that idea that you can do something, maybe you have a full-time job, but do something at night, help give it back. Um, we're also regularly adding new subjects based on requests from users. So if you want to learn something and you, and you don't see it on our website, uh, maybe it's a, a, a rare new coding language, request it. You know, we have you know, 40,000 experts in our ecosystem, someone out there we can find has that expertise and is willing to help you with that. And we're not just about the United States. Varsity Tutors, again, recently acquired first tutors in the U.K. to help us expand our international presence. And today uh, we're operating and we're providing uh, experts uh, or we're providing uh, expertise to learners in 15 different countries where we've introduce these learners in these other countries to our experts uh, across borders. And, and again, this idea of getting the best in the world. And we continue to look at artificial intelligence and machine learning to help our employees become better in their jobs and, and have the tutors in our marketplace become better by giving them more information, timely information. And while they're focusing on the content, uh, we can help them also understand, is the learner actually learning? 
So if we do have anyone listening today that's inspired by your passion uh, and what you're doing there and want to help give a little bit back, or maybe just want to find out more information, what's the best way for the listeners to find you online and also contact a member of your team if they have any questions? Yeah, Neil, thanks, thanks for that opportunity. So the best way to find us uh, is just spell it out. Uh, go on the Internet, Varsity Tutors. Uh, that's Tutors, T-U-T-O-R-S, so VarsityTutors.com. Um, you can find uh, both Varsity Tutors and myself personally on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. And if you want to email me directly, you can reach me at Kevin, so K-E-V-I-N, at VarsityTutors.com. Well, I'll add those links to the show notes just so anyone can find you nice and easy. I love what you're doing there with the professional tutoring, but what impresses me more than anything as well is how you're going out there and finding out these latest trends. And you're moving away from that one-size-fits-all approach and adopting that personalised learning. I think that's so important now. So more than anything, though, just a big thank you for coming on and sharing that story with me today. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Kevin dropped so many value bombs there, and thanks to technology, much of the world as we know it will be vastly different in just a few decades. And like Kevin said there, 65% of children entering primary school today will work in jobs that don't even exist yet. And the skills we focus on acquiring must reflect our society's future. But this isn't for kids, but this isn't just for kids either, this is for everyone of every age. Yes, AI, automation, etc. is going to replace jobs, but it will remove those mind-numbing and repetitive tasks that have turned us all into robots. So ironically, it's time to let the machines do all that stuff. Let them do their robotic jobs. And as humans, we need to step up and educate ourselves and get back to being human. And for that, we're talking about STEM subjects, creativity, innovation, soft skills. Only by focusing on these areas can we protect our future. Let the machines do what they do best and let the humans do what they do best. And it won't be about machines replacing humans. It will be about machines and humans working together to create an almost super hybrid workforce. And continuously learning is a path that we all need to embrace. But hey, I'm rambling. So share with me your thoughts on today's episode or even who's going to win the World Cup, how to make a nasty ear infection go away, or even to remove a clove of garlic from my ear. I'll leave it entirely up to you. You can do all that by emailing me at techblogwriter at outlook.com, or of course you can tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. But I'm afraid we're out of time, so all that's left for me to say is keep working hard, stay humble, and until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.